Wow, what could be said of my? I met my. first time on campus when I had seen her off in the distance walking around with her Japanese friends. This girl was like runway model beautiful. She was very tall and slender, had a very gorgeous head of hair, very good care of herself, dressed nice, and um, I thought she was way too young to pursue. She was 19 years old so I didn't bother but believe me I was admiring her from a distance. It was at a uh, Japanese planning social where the, where the um, Japanese committee were meeting. We were thinking a lot of activities that we could plan for the semester. And it was winter, I think it was uh, January, just after Christmas. It was our first meeting in the cafeteria. And uh, you know, you can't help but see Mai amongst the Japanese girls because she stood out so much. So, this uh, happy, vibrant, young, beautiful girl definitely caught my eye. Now, about a week later, I walked into the library, found a little enclosure booth in which to study my, my um, geology assignment and look over my... Um, language assignments and I, so I chose a booth and sat down and then I noticed out of the side of my eye that I was sitting beside Mai and I went back and uh, was practicing my work not paying her any attention when Mai leaned back in her chair and she tapped me on the shoulder and I looked over at her I smiled and she hand me she handed me a piece of paper and I looked at the piece of paper and read it and uh, on the paper she was asking me to go out with her if it would be okay and uh, you know I, I was shocked right I mean this girl was asking me out and so I agreed to I said sure and she was very happy. I remember that, a big broad smile. And then she packed up her books and her, her assignment papers and she thanked me and left the library. So I had contacted her and we decided to go out on that Saturday. And it was, you know, it was cold, but uh, she was always there on time. And it was the first time that I noticed that she was walking with a limp. You know, she had a skirt on and I could see, you know, a lot of Japanese girls have this bend in their legs. Very distinctive feature. But Mai's bend in her leg was extreme to the point where it uh, practically crippled her. I mean, she, she walked quite fine, but uh, I don't think she could ever run. It was a minor handicap in her life. It was through Mai that I learned about the northern island of Japan where the capital city of Sapporo was located. This was Mai's hometown, Sapporo. Um, she told me that they didn't have a snow removal. The government never had snow removal teams. It was up to the people who lived in the houses to come out of their house and shovel their sidewalks and shovel the street in front of the sidewalks. That was their snow removal. Snow removal was left up for the trains and the, the main highways where nobody lived, but not in the city. Anyway, I took Mai out. We went to a variety of different restaurants, but mostly I concentrated on uh, uh, artistic events and art galleries. And uh, she had a really good time, and she wanted to know more about uh, Lunenburg, this little tired old fishing community I don't know why everybody wants to go to because there's nothing there you could see the same thing in Halifax it's a major disappointment and um, 
One of the nicest compliments Maya ever paid to me was that she she had uh, said to me one time, I'm so glad that I had the courage enough to ask you out. It was such a good idea. And I knew right there and then that uh, I had done the right thing. I had a car, my own car at that time, that little Japanese import. And um, so I drove us around in that. I was ever so proud to be seen in that car with that girl. And, you know, I was hoping thousands of people were staring at us because she was a freaking beautiful girl, man. She was the girl that you dream of. So uh, I got to practice my Japanese with her. We visited many shops that she wanted to visit. One of the cutest incidents I had was her, with her was at a Arby's restaurant and the clerk there had asked her I let her order first and the clerk there had asked her did you want what type of bread did you want did you want whole wheat plain Italian and she tried she put her glasses on for the first time and she looked at the sign that she looked at him and she tried to figure out what he was trying to say like even though a Japanese person can look at you and speak to you in a uh, fairly good manner with no accent or there are many words that they just don't know they may not they may know enough to be linguistic but when it comes down to to specific words they don't know them and she didn't know what he was talking about so she looked at me and it was so cute she said she asked me what's he saying and so I made the decision for her rather than try to explain it. Uh, of course, healthy bread it was. I loved the way Ma used to speak in her language and her accent. When she'd say, um, I introduced her to an artist called uh, Maud Lewis. Maud is a very famous Nova Scotian artist. She used to paint on everything. She painted on her walls and her doors and, you know, various features of her house to the point where the government confiscated her house and took its walls and doors and anything that she painted on and they are now taken apart off the property site and kept in a museum. So I had introduced her to Maud Lewis and when she couldn't pronounce L like a lot of Japanese so she called her Maud Dewis. It was so freaking cute. I told her about my pet wolf and she said, you had a pet wolf? Because they pronounce, um, they can't pronounce wool. It comes out woo. And she said, you had a pet wolf? And it was, the way she pronounced it was so freaking cute. Mine was a girl you definitely adored. But unfortunately, as time would pass, and her father was paying the bill, it was time for her to go home, back to Sopporo. The day before she was to leave, she invited me to dinner. She said, I want to spend my last dinner with you. And so we were sitting in the cafeteria at school, and Mai had brought her camera with her, and she said, I want a picture of you and me together. And I agreed. And uh, but I said, did you bring a type? Um, tripod do you have a uh, timer on your camera and then she looked at me and she said uh, no I'll get my boyfriend to take a picture of us and I said boyfriend That's complete shock right she said yeah he's uh, sitting there across the other end of the cafeteria in the corner and he was he was over there with his friends so she walked over there and got him to come over and take a picture of us together and it shocked me I mean, you got your boyfriend? You had a boyfriend? We were going out together? Complete shock. And, and it was the type of uh, boyfriend-girlfriend relationship where they were... I think they were just hooked up for the sake of being together at a distant land so they wouldn't feel lonely. I'm not sure. I just didn't understand the modern Japanese way of doing things. And so uh, her boyfriend took the picture. And uh, we said our goodbyes, and she caught her plane and left for Sopporo. And about three days later, I met the boyfriend on the sidewalk, was talking to him. And he told me that he had broken off with my um, 
I think it was that day. They didn't last. Once she left, that the relationship was over. Maya and I kept in contact for a year, and then her she let her email site die. I've never heard from her since. I've never been able to contact her again. She just drifts into the fog of time, and she taught me um, the bizarreness of certain relationships. But I'll never forget her. She's a little, she was a little sweetheart. And I'm telling you, for, for an entire semester, she made me feel really, really great. I always have a special place in my heart for mine. Very big love.